all right here we are part two of inputs and outputs uh, looking at the computer processing and we left off with two wire thermistors um, and then from here our next input we're going to talk about is three wire analog sensors uh, these are sensors used to determine position and or speed the computer has a five volt reference it sends to the sensor that goes through a resistance strip then grounds back at the computer the third wire is a signal wire that changes voltage based on the position of the sweep and again, a sweep is attached to things like throttle body, uh, accelerator pedal, EGRs, uh, anything that needs to have something that moves. It needs to know the position and or speed. Uh, again, this is an analog three-wire sensor. So let's take a look at this diagram again. Our old infamous diagram. So here is the, basically the three-wire sensor. And again, this could be on a AC, like an HVAC mode door. Again, an accelerator pedal, TP, EGR. Um, Basically, something where the computer needs to know the position of something. So here's basically how it works. Here's our trusty old voltage regulator. That's going to send out that 5 volts. It comes out. Here's where it comes out of the computer. And it goes to the sensor. Here's one wire. And it goes through a resistive strip, which is a fixed resistor. And it goes through back to sensor ground. Well, here's the part that makes it um, so the computer can determine location. Right here, there's a sweep that moves across this fixed resistor. The closer it is up here, the closer to 5 volts. The further down here, the closer it is to ground, 0.1 or less, right? That's connected through the signal wire that goes to the computer. And then right here is where this arrow, that's the internal DMM that's monitoring the voltage of that circuit. And again, if it gets close to 5 volts, that means this, the, this position is up higher. And then anything in between down to 0.1 is down at, at to closer to ground. Now again, the circuit doesn't go from 0.1 to 5. I'm just giving you the extremes. It actually is typically from 0.5 up to 4.5 volts, and that lets it for um, it allows room for self-diagnostic purposes, and that's kind of what this fixed resistor and ground over here is as well. Um, we'll talk more about that in a different video, but the gist is you have 5 volts coming down, goes through this fixed resistor down to 0.1 right after that last load over to sensor ground, and then the sweep picks up that voltage drop somewhere along as here, uh, determined by the position of what this is attached to. It could be throttle body, accelerator pedal, um, could be in the HVAC for mode doors, uh, emission components, EGR position, etc. Okay, so we'll talk more about diagnosing these circuits uh, next next lesson. So then there's the three wire digital ones. So much like the three wire analog sensor, these sensors monitor position and their speed. Now, the difference is these <coughs> excuse me these sensors are supplied a voltage and a ground to operate a device that utilizes the Hall effect. And this effect will give a digital on off signal on the signal wire. So instead of having an analog sine wave on that digital wire or that signal wire, sorry, um, this digital sensor is going to give a square wave that's on and off. And again, I'll elaborate this more on next lesson. This is just an overview of these sensors. So let's take a look at a digital sensor and check it out. We got a new schematic. So right here, this is going to be your digital three wire sensor. Uh, notice this is a fourth wire. I threw this schematic in here to try and to show you uh, that this is a really, really common four wire digital sensor also. So basically what happens is you have battery voltage coming down right here and then you have a ground. So it's supplying power in the ground, but notice there's no sweep in here. Okay. This one's going to utilize uh, actually two Hall effect um, sensors. You're going to have signal one and signal two, and they're going to be offset and they're going to be connected to this motor. Now, what I mean by offset is it could be separated by 90 degrees or 180 degrees. It depends on the component and what the engineer is wanting. But this way, this gives the computer a direction. So if it sees signal one first, it knows which way it's going. If it sees signal two, it's going the other way. And again, I'll show you this uh, next lesson. Uh, this is just an overview. But this sensor basically gets a power on the ground, and it's going to output signals on these two wires, and they're going to be digital square wave signals. Okay. So if you lose power ground here, this sensor is just not going to work. And again, next lesson, we'll talk about diagnosing these a little bit more. This is more theory, operational, and then kind of just an introduction into diagnosing. Uh, so Ben, anyway, the computer takes these kinds of inputs, among many other inputs, and is going to process that data and compare it to the mapping in order to determine what output and how to operate that output. For example, I have kind of a crude old version of a, a, a timing a load table here. So if you look at this is all in timing degrees, this is a chart based on engine RPM and up here is engine load. So as you can see, if I had, you know, 80% right here and I was at, you know, 1000 
RPMs, here's 11 uh, degrees before top dead center for timing. Okay, so again, the computer's going to look at all of this if this, then that strategy on this X, Y axis for this kind of old school mapping. Computers can use voltage, current, and resistance to determine the inputs and if outputs are working. And what I mean by that is the inputs can be in voltage, like those DMMs we talked about a minute ago that are internal to the computer. It can be measuring current as an internal ammeter, or it can be measuring resistance with an internal ohmmeter. It's using all of that with um, basically Ohm's law uh, calculations to determine those inputs. And then it can also monitor current on outputs to determine if they're working correctly. So outputs, speaking of outputs, uh, they are used by the computer once it's received its information from its inputs and processed the data in the correct table. Outputs mostly fall into these kind of categories, and these are totally broad uh, categories that I came up with, uh, just in my mind, that can simplify, in fact, oversimplify what a computer does. Uh, the first category is electromagnetic, uh, basically induction category, and the second is a resistive element. Okay, and again, I'm going to elaborate this on more. They... they there's many, many outputs, but these are the two most common broad categories that I can come up with. Okay. And of course, like inputs, outputs can also be raw data. And we will save that for another time, perhaps another class. <clears throat> so outputs, electromagnetic. These kind of outputs use magnetism to perform a task. They are usually used with a relay, which uses magnetism as well. And some examples include, again, the relay, a solenoid, actuator, motors, coil, etc. So all of these devices use current and, and coils to build an electromagnetic field to perform a task. Whether it's a relay to close a switch, a solenoid to move a plunger, an actuator to move a door, uh, motors to move, you know, like a radiator fan to cool something, a coil like an ignition coil, etc. Uh, shift solenoids for transmissions. All of these kinds of circuits use current to create a magnetic field to operate uh, a mechanical device. Okay, so let's look at one of these kind of diagrams. Real basic, simple, PCM is going to control and turn on a solenoid valve here. This can be a fuel injector, it could be a shift solenoid, it can be a, an emission solenoid, and honestly the load doesn't matter. Remember in class, I kept switching light bulbs for motors, for resistors. The load is irrelevant. What you need to be aware of is Ohm's law, right? I get voltage up to the open. I know that in a series circuit, current is the same at all points. Um, I know basically as resistance goes up, current goes down, vice versa. So I'm thinking about all of these Ohm's law uh, kind of probabilities and, and rules to determine if the circuit's working, right? So the computer controls that with the power going to it, and then it operates its thing, whatever it's doing. Okay, the other output that I'm going to talk about is resistive elements. And this, again, is a broad category. These outputs use current to perform a task um, that, that's different than electromagnetism. That task is usually creating heat and or light. So examples, of course, lights, defroster grids, think about, you know, on your rear window, resistive heaters, um, like electric vehicle, you can run current through a resistive PTC heater that's going to create heat, right? Just like the defroster grid, that is a resistive heater. I just wanted to break it down a little more. Um, but this is kind of what I'm going with. Uh, these can be duty cycled to control loads, and we'll save that for next lesson. But let's look at a diagram of one of these. And I got just a light bulb. And notice the computer is on the bottom this time. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. This one is a low side driver where the previous solenoid was a high side driver. Now, again, this ceiling light can be anything. It can be a cooling fan motor. It can be anything. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But for the sake of this lesson on output, we're talking about resistive element. The current's going through this tungsten steel and this incandescent bulb, and that's going to create light, right? The, the tungsten doesn't consume because there's no oxygen inside that bulb. It's sealed. So it just gets bright and it gets kind of glowing with resistive heat. But same thing with the, so the resistive heater, defrosted heaters. Uh, these kind of outputs are using current to create heat or light. Now, how does the computer control that? Well, basically transistors. Okay, so transistors are solid state devices used by the computer to control various outputs. And as you can see on this picture right here, um, it's showing you kind of how the transistor has got three pins going to it. Here's a picture of a transistor. These are schematic representations of an NPN and a PNP. And again, we'll get to that in a second. And then this is showing you what it's, uh, this is an NPN breakdown. They're doped material, kind of semiconductors. And if you apply, uh, in, in this case, an NPN, a, a positive current right here to this base, it's going to allow current to go from here to here. So it's kind of like a switch, but kind of like a relay. 
So they work similar to a relay, and I, I like to diagnose them like a switch. And again, it gets way more complex than that, but this is kind of in my mind, I like to simplify things and make it work for me. This is what allowed me to be a technician for many years and be successful technician is that I oversimplified some things and I was very curious about how things worked. So again, these go way more complex if you're electrical engineering, but for the sake of an automotive technician, if you think of them working like a relay, where a small amount of current controls a large amount of current, and then you diagnose them like a switch, you're going to be peachy keen, A-OK. -okay. And what I mean by relay is if the more current I send to the base, the more current can go through from here to here, the collector to the emitter. Okay, so let's basically move on. You got high side and low side drivers, which I will show you here in these diagrams. So we have an NPN and a PNP. Now the way I keep this straight in my mind, this arrow right here, okay, and the collector and emitter, uh, when you see them coming through like this. So we have the base right here in the center, and on the NPN, if you see that arrow, it's not pointing in, okay? And this is going to be your low side kind of drivers. And then over here, you have a arrow pointing point in, please. That's how I just that's how I remember them. It worked for me, so let's go with it. But basically, I diagnose NPNs like a switch to ground circuit because that's what it is. As the computer controls this base right here, it's going to allow current to run through this transistor collector and emitter to ground. Turn it on the load. So you have power up here. So this is your low side driver NPN. Okay, the more current I apply to the base, the more current comes through, and that's where it's like a relay. The reason why I say I diagnose it like a switch is, is I have if I have 12 volts up to this transistor, I know the base isn't being applied. Okay, and once I apply the base, this 12 volts goes down to 0.1 or less, much like a switch to ground. So diagnose it accordingly. And then over here, the PNP, this is also known as a high side driver, and I'm going to diagnose that like a switch too, just a load to ground circuit. I'm going to have 12 volts up to the transistor until the transistor is turned on by the computer, and then I'm going to have 12 volts after it. So I should have zero here go into the load until the transistor is turned on, and then they get the 12 volts or whatever operating voltage is needed for this load, in this case a motor, to operate. So again, the NPN I diagnose like a switch to ground, the PNP I diagnose like a load to ground circuit. Okay, And that actually is going to do it for part two. Stay tuned for part three and we will finish this series.